your Eco Save Africa speaking to us about this. Now, I'll leave you with this um, feature. In Kenya, artists have found new ways to take their works from the traditional showrooms to organizing events that not only have entertainment but also have social goodwill. Now, for the case of Yvonne Sirali, an artist, business lady, and a mental health advocate, she speaks to Apollo James and shares why she uses her platform and business niche dubbed Paint and Sip, which brings together amateur and aspiring painters to learn how to paint as well as make a sustainable living outbid their craft. On our conversation today on leadership, careers and management, we're talking about the business of art. And I'm joined by a world-class artist, Yvonne Wambui Sirali. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Jamie. Uh, tell us, how did you get into this business of art? Uh, so my background with art is it has been a childhood, something I got interested in when I was really young, around nine years. And uh, I got even more interested when I was in high school. So it's something I wanted to do fully after high school. But then I ended up in the hotel industry. And uh, finally, I'm now here. How long were you in the hotel industry? I was there for two years, and uh, I worked in uh, five hotels, so mm -hmm. it was a lot of job hopping. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, but what made you like realize now it's the time that you so, are going to art? Uh, honestly, when I was in high school, and guys would say uh, I'm going to do ABCD when I'm done with high school. For me, I was like, I'm going to be an artist. You know, this is what I want to do. So after high school, my mom was like, um, I have to do business or something else because she couldn't afford to take me to a, an art school. So I forgot about it, did the whole, joined corporate, did the whole corporate for two years, but something was amiss. It didn't feel at home. I was so different. I was always challenging rules and finding my, myself on the other side and everything. So then I remembered, I went through a whole episode of uh, transition and then I asked myself, so what exactly do I want to do with my life? And I remember, oh, art, like, why did I leave that behind? Many people who are gifted are very afraid of taking their time to research about their gifts mm -hmm. and uh, even coming up with how they can sustain it to be a business model. How did it work for you? Uh, for me, I would say, uh, you know how they say nothing ha everything happens for a reason? So even if I didn't really like it that much in the corporate world, there's something I took with me because I was in the sales department. So this is something that I ended up applying in the art. So I started with selling art and also just researching, you know, because I'm also self-taught. So I had to, so I was juggling between Google and YouTube trying to figure out, okay, so what can I do with this uh, talent? How can I make money? What type of products can I come up with to at least keep it pushing? Because you also don't get to sell paintings daily. Yeah. So uh, I, I honestly, I, 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 there is no, uh, there's no clear phrase for me to put in that, uh, this is how the transition went with the salary and the earnings. Yeah. I just had to wing it and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to realize, okay, the small, because they come now in small bits, not like salary monthly. So I had to figure out, okay, maybe now I need to start saving, take certain percentage aside for the rent and all that, and just figure out now how to have the bills paid also monthly mm. and all that. Yeah. How was it like getting your first client? Oh my goodness! It was the best <laughs> feeling ever. Because now it was an epiphany for me. That's what, that's what actually be my light in my head and be like, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is yeah. where I my first client was actually on Rebel Joho. I keep saying it, but it's true. On Rebel Joho? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I did my first paintings. DM'd everybody on Instagram, and he was one of the first one who replied, and I sold my first paintings. I remember when going was, when I was going back home, I was like, yeah, I'm going to quit that job tomorrow. That was a Sunday. Tomorrow was a Monday. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, my first client went really well. It was such an epiphany for me, to be honest. I kicked yeah. yeah. And after you got your first client, how was, how was it How was it getting other clients or in terms of even marketing and putting yourself out there? How was, how was the experience and did you get any challenges? Oh, yeah. Of course, challenges were there because this was a completely new field I was stepping in. It was like a walk in the park trying to, trying to figure out what's working, what's not working. So after my first client, uh, him being... Uh, prominent person, mm -hmm. it helps with gaining a little, little bit of followers and maybe just people raising their eyebrows. Okay, there's this girl who's talented, she's doing ABCD. So that helped. Uh, it took a minute for me to get the next uh, uh, client, but you see, I was already in this space where I was so excited. I was like, I'm doing this journey no matter what it takes, yeah. how long it takes. Yeah. So it took a minute, but I think with time, I got, uh, I adjusted to 
how, how do I put it? I adjusted to the unpredictable uh, tendencies of it. Do you have a, a rough figure of, of how many paintings you've done? Oh, my God. Or you've sold? How many I've sold? Yeah. Interestingly, I've never sat down to count that. I think I should do that after this interview. Okay. Uh, I think there should, should be around 20. How many I've done? I've painted so many. Maybe 40 something, 50. I don't okay. know. Because I'm always painting. Best seller? Sorry? Best seller? Best seller. Uh, I would say it's this painting uh, I did. And, uh, you know, as an artist, sometimes we tend to question our own work, I would say. But then, uh, so I stayed with it, I stayed with it. I was like, well, would anybody ever buy this piece? It's called Undecided. So it was like an African face, has the eyes facing on the other side. It's still like, it's like one face, but two people. It was really interesting. And then there's a guy from Diaspora who saw it uh, on Facebook and was like, I need this piece, so I shipped it. So I've done, I've shipped other pieces out of the country. Mm. But this one was so personal because it's one of those pieces I had given hope on. I was just like, okay. What was the story behind it? The story behind it was, for me, I am a mental health advocate. Everything I do, uh, the angle is mental health because it's, it's, it's really, uh, I think it's something we really need to focus on, especially yeah. now. It's, uh, a challenge globally, especially now with the economic uh, hard times and everything. So that piece was, the name was undecided because I think I was also going through, I was in a moment where, I, okay, you know, that journey has just, it has humbled me. It has been quite something and no regrets at all. I've learned a lot. And uh, I didn't know, I was at a point where I did it a few months into, a few months into the journey, I didn't really know what I was doing, what, how to navigate, what's the next step. Like, I still know I have something to do, but just trying to plan everything. So I do that, and, and when I have these feelings, I really don't know what I'm, going, I'm doing and everything. I just I go back to art, I put it all on canvas and everything. So that was one of those pieces where I was just undecided. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, um, you then went and started Sip and Dine yes. by Sirali. Yeah. Give us, how, how did that concept come up and how is it really going on at the moment? Ah, okay, so I th also the, the sip and paint events I hold, I, I call them brush with me because for me, just me coming, me brushing with my clients is just because uh, my whole satisfa satisfaction with art is seeing the smile it brings on people's faces. Yeah. That's just what makes me happy. So uh, during COVID, okay, you know, art is the last thing somebody would want to buy. Even those clients I had in my list would be like, ah, oh, no. I'll uh, have to hit you up later, you know what's going on. It's like, that was the first thing people would cancel on their to my list. So I was like, okay. And then I would also, I was also printing hoodies just on the side and t-shirts. But now when it comes to art, I was like, okay, so what else can I do? And then I had seen online, cause I think with also what I'm, I'm doing, I get a lot of ideas online on social media, researching and everything. So I could see guys are doing sip and paint, maybe abroad and other places. I had seen some here, up here as well, but not that much. But then at that time, because of people gathering and everything, we couldn't, I couldn't execute the idea. Yeah. So after the after COVID, when after we could uh, we had it now, we could not be allowed to have a group of people in one space and all that. Uh, there's a restaurant called Tomoka, so they were like, ah, oh, you know, you can come. We hold the event here. I did ten sessions with them, which went really well. But then I realized it's it's even it would be better if I do it on my own. So. And um, as you were saying, how much do you charge for the Sip it, paint with me. Okay, so for the brush with me, I oh, charge. Oh, it's brush with it's me. Brush with me. Okay, yeah. apologies. <laughs> brush. <laughs> yeah, so for brush with me, I charge two thousand five hundred. So when a client comes, we provide all the supplies there. My team, we are there. We supply. We provide all the art supplies. It comes with a glass of wine or soft drink, and then you get to keep what you've painted. Mm. Guys, well, what what are the you like you know the the major feedbacks you get from your clients? The, the, uh, session. Uh, the major feedbacks I get is, I was actually interesting, I was just reading feedbacks the other day from the, from the link, and I realized guys really enjoy the self-love part, where we do this, where we stop them from brushing, just do these little activities of writing affirmations and that, and they really connect with that, because you know, with everything going on, uh, art, is a, art, art plays as a mental well-being medium on its own, so it's something they get connected to, because you know, it's relaxes your mind, yeah, it yeah. has really good benefits, it uh, uh, builds confidence, because I had, as I had mentioned, so with all these benefits, they just feel connected and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah plus you take home what you've created. You know, there's that, oh, I didn't know I could paint. You know, you come and see brushes, you have anxiety, and then you end up with something really nice and you're like, oh my goodness, I could paint, yeah. So seeing that transition, we really like seeing that, going from 
panic mode to, oh my goodness, taking selfies, I painted this. Yeah. yeah, we love seeing that. So we'd start with believe in yourself, self-believe. You know, you lock all these, all these noise, believe in yourself. Once you believe in your craft and also accept the fact that we are always learning and always progressing, so that is important. And then now when it comes to how to market yourself, because, you know, it's one thing to be very talented and it's another thing to know how to market your work here and there. So I would just say what has worked for me is I've really had to tap into working online. It's be it having websites, joining these artist website, and uh, there's always so many programs out there to help you. There are guys, honestly, who see the value of artists and want to actually pump in money into a program and teach you something, maybe let's say like a a master class for a month or something and uh, these are really important so keep don't don't just be chilling even when you're just chilling with your phone try to research be on the google articles all that instagram twitter hashtags check out art what is going on what can you apply what can you try new so yeah and also market yourself you know keep pushing what you've painted on people's face they'll see it and maybe somebody somewhere will be touched by it. So keep going, don't give up. I know it's a journey that, an artist journey is something that only the artist can understand because sometimes you're just like, oh, you actually listen to those voices now, you're like, oh, you're like, what am I really doing, you know? But once you build, work on yourself first, ensure you're working on it because you are the foundation of what you're creating. Once you're good and also try to, remember to always work on your mental health, remember the tools, try to write, taking walks, talking to people and yes so once your mental health is good then you get more productive with creating and then you try to see how you can market your work push it on people's even be open to paying for ads here and there on instagram or facebook it does help